Hello my fellow geeks, today we're going to take a look at what I think is the best quadcopter to start out with. Probably for kids, I think it's an outstanding Christmas present, at least that's the theory. So we're going to open one up, I got one, and we're going to find out. It's the e e machine, EA machine, depends on who you ask, the E010. It's available from both Amazon and Banggood. I've all put links in the description below so you can check it out. The big difference is the price and whether you want to wait for it to come from China or whether you want to order it from America and have it right away. But for the price difference, I ordered mine from China. So we're going to take a look here. It's available in both red and green. So I, uh, I actually don't even remember which one I ordered. Okay, we got the green one. So it looks really nice. This is basically a clone of the Blade Inductrix. And what the Blade Inductrix has done is kind of changed the way people have flown inside quads. With this, you get a remote control, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. That's probably the biggest complaint that most people have. Um, and this quadcopter is really nice because it's super tiny. The big, big deal about it is it comes with these ducted fins for the propellers. All the propellers are within, they're totally enclosed with this reinforced carrier so people can bounce them off the walls and it keeps going and you can run it into people and they're not going to get hurt for the most part. I still wouldn't recommend it. Official Elite Geek policy is do not fly these into people, but if it happens, they're probably going to be okay. So all combined here, it's a really small unit. It fits in the palm of my hand and you can it has a battery carrier that comes pre-installed underneath um, on this unit the care the battery itself let's see what do we have here okay so we have a 150 milliamps 30c battery it's kind of a small battery compared to the inductrix that we've been flying which i've been flying about 200 milliamp batteries in the box you get the quadcopter itself which is really nice i hope we'll find out and it's all wired up and ready to go with the battery you get the controller so in the control with the controller I i've heard a lot of complaints about this mainly because the throw is so short on these it's very hard it's very hard to fine tune the control with it so one of the things I've got coming is some extensions for these that you put on top that gives it a much longer control you also have buttons that the buttons are going to control the rates of it so it has a lot high rate mode a low rate mode so out of the box it's great for beginners it'll have nice and small controls but then when you're more advanced you press one of the buttons and it turns to high rate mode i'm not sure what the other button does we're gonna have to check out the manual this uses two AA batteries it also includes a usb charger so everything's usb you don't have to have anything special and the battery will just plug in right here it also comes with some a set of spare props which is really nice so let's see if there's anything special in the instruction manual. So at a glance, I will say for being a Chinese unit, a lot of times this type of thing comes with instruction manuals, manuals that you might as well just throw away. These actually look like pretty good instructions. It shows how to do flips, shows how to do all the operational controls, shows how to do some troubleshooting and reinstall. Um, and it's available in English and I'm assuming that's Chinese. Here's a comparison with the name brand model, the Blade Inductrix. Now this Blade Inductrix is actually the Inductrix FPV and that is probably what I'm going to do with this unit as well. The goal here is to be able to fly this, it's great for kids, it's great for starting out, but then I want to stick a camera on it. That's one of my first goals. So what I have here is a small micro camera with a built-in FPV transmitter. It's an analog transmitter built right into the top. So with this little unit, it comes with this a battery pigtail that I can take one of these and solder it directly to the board here and we'll have future videos there's lots of videos on YouTube right now showing you how to do that we're gonna do one in the future when we can try it and then we'll be able to have multiple units to be able to fly together the blade inductrix FPV unit versus the the Ishin 010 with a attached camera so we'll we'll kind of see how it goes the big difference is the blade inductrix FPV is a hundred dollars with a bind and fly so you have to provide your own radio your own camera gear and everything this unit from Banggood is fifteen dollars with a twenty five dollar camera so for forty dollars I get a unit that I can fly 
theoretically, as well as the Inductrix FPB. Now, the camera will be much more, uh, much more susceptible to damage, and so we'll have to see how that affects it. But for the price difference, for less than half the price difference, it also comes with the controller. Now, one disadvantage here is the Inductrix I can bind to my Spectrum radio. So I have an extra DX5E and a DX6I that I can bind this to. I also have a uh, orange module in my Tyrannus radio that I can use with this. This can't really bind with anything. You're stuck with this controller. So in the future, we are going to review the extensions that you can get for this and see how they go. Uh, we'll have a link below. I, uh, I don't have mine here yet to try, but they are on their way. So the unit is charging now. One of the things I want to talk about is the charging unit's a little weird. When the battery is charging, the light is off. And when you plug the battery in, the light turns off. And when it's done, the light turns off. That is backwards from how most of these units work. Most of the time, they're charging when the light is on, turns off when it's done. This one is the other way around. So I wanted to point that out. I actually grabbed the manual and checked. And it was very clear. It was nicely written. So I could tell that that's what was going on. But it just seemed the opposite of just about every other charger that I've used for these types of things. So, uh, so now you know. Next step, we'll let that finish charging so when the light turns on, I'll know it's done. We'll put some batteries in the control and we'll give it a shot. All right, so we've got batteries in the charger or in the controller. This takes two batteries. We're going to try and uh, this connect this up. We also have now the battery has finished charging. We put it in the packet here. So what should happen is we should be able to plug this in. Let's see what happens. If uh, it's a little hard to get it plugged in there. Normally, okay, so we have a quick flashing light. We turn this on, and it should automatically bind together, hopefully. 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 Oh, if it doesn't, we're going to have to read the instructions. Does not seem to be binding. All right, well, let's see. Maybe there's an order. Maybe we need to unplug this. Oh, come on. There we go. Plug that back in. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, so we're going to try it again. We're going to turn the radio on first. Let it flash, and then we'll plug this in. Oh, there we go. Get it plugged in. So see if they bind automatically, automatically. Nope. All right, so we're gonna have to find out, and uh, we'll come back and read the after we read the instructions. Okay, so we're back, and we actually read the manual. There's a lot of stuff in there, but to keep it simple for right now, what you've got to do is turn on the radio. Turn on the quadcopter. We're plugging, plug in the quadcopter, and they'll both flash. And then you have to move the stick all the way to the top. It should beep. Nope, no beeping. Okay, then move it back down. Okay, so you move it back down, and then it will beep. That's not exactly what it says. The other thing you're supposed to do is keep the quadcopter level, and move this to the right stick to the corner. It'll flash, and then turn the light will turn steady. That means it's calibrated and it's balanced. Don't know if you have to do that or not, but that's what the instructions say. So now let's go try and fly it. So to see how this works for a younger flyer, I'm actually going to have my son try and fly it the first time. We've got it there on the ground. He's flown some quadcopters before, so this should be really easy for him to just start out and go. All right, go. That looks pretty smooth. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Let me restart it. Okay, restart it. Okay, try and keep it level. Oh. oh, so that's testing the durability. Hold on, how, get, get it. I didn't know how strong it was. It, it's pretty strong, it's fast, isn't it? It's way faster than the other one. Okay, there you go. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Whoa, all right, that's, we're gonna make everybody sick with it moving so much. There we go, that's pretty smooth. Okay, all right, go ahead and land it. All right. It's not flying so well for me. So I think that's, here, hold on. So I think part of the problem is the controls on this. This control stick that we've got here is really, really tiny. And it's hard to control. The other ones that he's used to have much larger controls and are easier to have uh, finer control with. So I'm going to try it now and you record and let's see how I can do. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to take it off and see how smooth it is. 
Okay, so I've been flying these a lot longer. That is really, really smooth right out of the box. I'll bring it back toward us a little bit. Right there, fly it over to the wall. And just barely touching the wall, it's fine. Yeah, with just a little bit of fine control, it turns nicely. See how quick it is? Bring it back to us quickly. Yeah, it's not fast, but I'm I'm also in uh, I'm in a standard mode. There's a high performance mode that we've not messed with yet. But right out of the box for the first flight. So part of the big deal about this though is the durability. So let's see here if we just smash it in the wall. Okay, you have to turn it off. Let's see if we have any damage. Okay. So the struts, the, I will say I've had both a uh, Inductrix and now this Eshin, e and the frame on this Eshin actually looks a lot stronger to me, just at a glance. I've broken several Inductrix frames, and uh, this just looks like it's going to hold up better. Let's try it again. All right, if we go just go crazy. Okay, so I'm expecting a lot of that flight from kids this year. That smashed the wall pretty good, and it's it's absolutely fine. Um, it's going to survive that without a problem at all. Okay, so here, let's put it back down and try try and see. Let's see, I'm going to try and turn it into rate mode. I think it's this button. So I think that should make it faster. So now let's try and turn and go this way. Oh, that's there we go. That definitely makes it faster. It's still nice and smooth, but that made it quite a bit quicker. So when we have the goal of having the camera on it, that's definitely going to be uh, be better. The controls are really, really crisp. It's really smooth. Um, I, I'm really impressed. For $15, you can come right up here, right in front of us. That's all nose in, and that's really smooth. So we've got pretty good battery life on it too. We've been going three minutes or so. I don't know. We have I haven't kept track exactly, we try now. but it's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to turn it back off of rate mode, and then we'll let uh, Buddy try it again. So I think that switched it back. Yep, that switched it back to regular mode. Okay, you can try again. Okay, here we go. Can you keep it as smooth as I did? So Buddy here is six, so I would not expect quite the same uh, control level, but that's pretty good. That's why I smashed it in the wall as hard as I could, though, just to see how well it did. That's really good. Yeah, I think that's perfectly acceptable. For $15, this thing is, oh, this thing is an absolute steal. Um, so one of the things I also did that's not here yet, I bought a five pack of batteries. The five pack of batteries comes with a multi-charger. Uh, I'll link that in the description below also. So it lets you charge all the batteries at once instead of just one at a time, like the one I've got here. Um, but it will, uh, that'll be handy and you can order extra frames. Um, I ordered another camera that we're going to take the top off of this one and try and put a camera on it next. That'll be our next goal. I also have some Inductrix batteries that we will show how to put a uh, cable on here so we can use either the Ishin batteries or the Inductrix batteries. So that'll be in a future video. But that's it. Overall, I am, uh, I am very impressed with this little machine for the price. It's outstanding. Uh, I think I, I, it... Oh. <laughs> if you want, you can print new frames for it. Uh, off of Thingiverse. There's a whole bunch of accessories you can get for it, but as a base unit, we'll definitely, once we get the extra accessories, the better controls and the batteries, we'll do another review. But for now, I'm going to call it a hit. Uh -huh. So that's going to be it this time. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video. Tell me if you're going to get one of these or what kind of modifications you have done to yours and what we should do to ours, and we'll make sure we uh, take that into account. Make sure you subscribe so you see all the future videos that we do on this and a lot of Star Wars awesome stuff as well. And remember, if you're going to be a geek, be an elite geek.